Hey, what's up guys? It's your girl, Jay Rose. Thank you so much for tuning into the Jay Rose Experience. We have a very special episode for you guys today. We invited spoken word poet Lindo and visual artist Art by Sir to come through and chop it up with us. We talked about advice that we wish we got when we were younger. And we also had a lot of fun during our off the top segment playing around with some truths and lies. So make sure you stick around. Keep growing. Welcome to the J Rose Experience. I'm your host, J Rose. We are here for season three in Philly, bringing you some amazing, amazing creatives that are out here just killing the damn creative scene. We have a special episode today because we have a little bit of poetry and we got a sprinkle of visual art. And I'm really excited to introduce you guys to today's guest. My first guest is none other than Philly based poet Lindo. Please give it up. Yay! <laughs> <clears throat> How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I love the whole, like, look, I'm feeling it. Is that your merch? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling that. <laughs> Gotta let the audience know where to find that later on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to get to know you a little bit more. We connected on, like, Instagram, so it's, mm -hmm. like, it's finally, like, super surreal to, like, meet you in person. Mm -hmm. Um, I was reading your bio, and... Uh, there were some uh, really, really prestigious stages that you've been able to bless. Mm -hmm. um, and I found, I was like super impressed and I wanted to know, um, how were you able to get the opportunities to be able to perform on stages like that? And what are some of the, the stages that you, you've been on? So get, being on those stages, I have always treated my career like most artists do. Um, it's just like always treat myself as employed and unemployed at the same time. Mm -hmm. So even when I have a gig, I'm always still trying to go after other gigs. So, you know, I have always been a person about like, what is the best way to pre uh, like present myself to the audience? So I've always been about like, what does my electronic press kiss look like? And I've been sending that out there like you would send out a, you know, resume and stuff really? like that. I'm always like looking for gigs and opportunity. So I just searched Google I send out my press kit and hopefully people respond and then, you know, just negotiate from there. So it's really no like trick. It's just like treating it like you would treat any other occupation. Only difference here is that you can't just rely on one source of just like income as well as just like one gig. So like I could get booked for like Def Jam Poetry and then I don't stop there. I got to be like, yo, what's the next job? Yeah. What's the next job? What's the next stage? <laughs> yeah, what's the next job? So I just always been treating it like that. So some of the stuff I've been on, I've been on um, Deaf Poetry Jam. I've been at Bucknell Colleges, a few colleges, Temple University. Um, just, a, just a lot of colleges and open mics across the city, across the East Coast. I haven't made it up to the West Coast yet. The furthest I have hit is uh, Michigan. Right. So I've been on some of their stages there. A lot of just like open mics up in there. And, you know, really just like word of mouth has been like really, you know, great for me in social yeah, media. Absolutely. And you, you hit, like, you mentioned something. You mentioned the EPK, the Electronic Press Kit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was having a conversation with another creative and um, who was on the show. Mm -hmm. And I had said, um, she's like, you know, I never wrote a bio until you asked me for that. And I was just like, girl, you need an EPK. Like, you need <laughs> to have, like, your information. So, like, can you just express, like, how important it is to have something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's as important as having a cover letter, resume, and job experiences, yeah. and, like, reference numbers. So that's how I look at my EPK. Like, my EPK has, like, all the shows I've been at, people saying what they felt about my shows, and then also just, like, general content that, you know, my stuff is, like, talking about. What does my poetry talk about? And stuff yeah. that I have done as far as accolades. And then a bio. And, you know, of course it has stuff for promoters, so it's just an easier conversation, because, like, in my field of work, I have to respond to things so fast. Yeah. And I'm like doing this all by myself. The easier I can make conversations, the better I am with opportunities. I maximize the opportunities. So inside my um, EPK is like access to all my videos, 
access to photos people need for flyers. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it, it just makes conversation easier because like once you get a gig, the first thing I'm gonna ask you, can I get a picture and stuff? Yeah. For like, you know, flyers. So I'm like, no, it's all right there. It's here. <laughs> all we need to talk Take about <laughs> is talk about this bag at this point. You know? Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a question about the bag. Um, I hear that. Yeah, so... You How know. were you able to get on uh, Def Jam? Like, I remember watching Def Jam poetry and I, I, like, thinking to myself, like, not really believing in myself and feeling like I could never make it to that, a stage like that. And now I'm looking at myself, like, 10 years later, like, I'm created a stage like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, It was... Part of it had to do with, the, you know, the pandemic that we're in. Um, and then also it has to do with, you know, what we were just talking about, just like always putting myself out there. Mm. So, um, I had, um, had a show at community college of Philadelphia and someone that was a producer of the show was in the audience. He said like, yo, we're doing a fundraiser, um, to help out folks in New Jersey during the pandemic. And we're interested in having poetry and stuff like that. And it's going to be for deaf poetry jam because it's going to be a fundraiser. Um, with all the deaf poets, old, new, and then some people that were vetting like yourself to be a part of the show. So I just applied for it. Um, and then I just woke up one morning and I saw that I was on deaf poetry jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, they just like made a flyer of me and then reached out to me and it was like, you know, it was oh experience. Oh my gosh. What a great feeling. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I'd be super honored. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. It was like, I woke up, I opened up my Instagram and I just saw like 50 some notifications of just like, yo, Lindo's on Deaf Poetry Jam. And I'm like, shit, this shit happened in a week. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was like, like, how did everybody know before me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like one of these moments, like sometimes when you're applying to gigs, they, they, like, you think you didn't get it because like you don't hear from them yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah. And then when you hear of them, it's like being an artist is like such a hurry up and wait game because like, <laughs> I feel like a lot of times I get paid for just to wait more yeah. than I actually do to get paid for, or like actually performing. And like when moments like that happen, it's just like now we need all this information for you. But I, know, I you're was like, wait, wait. <laughs> but I was like, I applied for this like two months ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I thought I didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What would you say about um, your style of poetry? Um, um, you mentioned that that's what's you know that's how you would explain it in your bio. My style of poetry, I like the, I it's I have just like changed as a person. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like I've been trying to like really like perform my po- poetry for more of a healing space, especially since talking to my therapist and just real recognizing that I can acknowledge the hurt, but at the same time recognize what it takes to overcome that, yeah. or not knowing what's to overcome that, and start asking those questions. As far as like just not just talking from a place of hurt and it's just always going to be present in my life. Mm. But talking about that recovery, so like right now my poetry is is really just dealing with the softness, dealing with this tenderness, and dealing with just like putting masculinity under a microscope of just like how can I hold myself accountable if I want my other male peers to be held accountable, mm. and then also what can I do to just really be soft in the sense of just like using my emotions as my sword and my shield because like I've been conditioned, you know, just growing up to just be like emotionally empathetic and that was the alpha everything. Yeah. But nothing in my life has been able to like navigate in that way and I just don't feel right that way. Mm. I have always like used my emotions to like lead me to places I wanna go. Yeah. Um so like for me right now that's the space I am. But when you like look at my category I like my catalog of all the shit I've been doing. Can I curse? Yes. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I love when guests <laughs> ask that question. Yeah. Um, catalog, it really just deals with just like being, like my actual performance is pretty theatrical. I like to really try to invite people into my imagination. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, topics can go from just like, you know, just emotional well being of just like, dag. How much of a fuck boy I was in that relationship. Yeah. How much <laughs> I hurt true. my si- <laughs> How much um I'm hurt by these things that I didn't think were uh like present and just really just a black experience. Yeah. Talking about these black lives and just like what what it means to be a black person. Yeah. And what it means to be a black person creating art. Yeah. You touched on um 
soft masculinity and mm-hmm. I saw that you know you do you do workshops mm-hmm. um about um male toxic masculinity and mm-hmm. soft what is soft masculinity? I never heard that term before. So so soft masculinity is this idea of just like looking at masculinity in its tender moments and just really allowing that to be like something that is used as a sword. So in the yeah. sense of just like it is crying over what and it is crying over our graduation. So a lot of times with just like toxic masculinity, the expression of tears has always come from a place of really extreme tragedies. Yeah. Like someone died, something really hurt me bad. But it's like soft masculinity is a practice of like I can cry with joy and I can yeah. also cry with just like certain hurt. So like for example, like we're in a pandemic right now and I had to take the, the coronavirus uh joint uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we in Philly. We in Philly. So here we are. And like one of the moments that I had was like when they put that Q tip up your nose, it uh, goes it goes all the way to, to your, your brain, brain right? Yeah. And like if you you caught me five years ago, I would just take that in because that's what I'm supposed to do. But I it was the first time I just cried. <laughs> And I, you I cr- were like, fuck that hurt. Yeah, like, like, and the nurse lied to me. She was like, just gonna be really quick. You won't feel no pain. She stuffed that shit up my <laughs> nose, right? And I felt everything in my life, right? <laughs> I felt everything yes. in my life. And then, like, when she did it, I, tears came down my eyes. And then, like, I cried for, like, two, three minutes, but then the hurt was gone. Yeah, yeah. So just, like, that's the practice of, like, not feeling shame of those moments, not feeling embarrassed of the moments. And then having within yourself to be able to express the moments and be able to know like that's a part of healing and that yeah. is just as important as everything else in life. Absolutely. Wow. I love, I love that. I have one last question for you. What is your favorite shoes to perform in? Oh, I don't. I'm not a sneakerhead. I'm normally just like my brother's a sneakerhead. So whatever he gives me, I wear. <laughs> love that black. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool, but right cool. now, I, I've been wearing a lot of felines, and only because I've been wearing felines because it's like that's the only thing I can afford. Because <laughs> yeah. like I like Reeboks. I like the high top Reeboks. Um, but they got too popular, and they just like too much money now. So yeah. I'm like the felines look just like them, and they're like fifty, sixty dollars. So I'm yeah. like, I get them. Listen, you got to take care of those pockets, too, because you can't just be splurging for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know you got some some poetry for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mind sharing that with us? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. All I got right, you. Back. I got cool. you. Cool. We'll be right back with a performance from Mindo. I was at the house party. You so loud. Hands waving in the air, all I heard him say is, Where the real kings at? Where the real kings at? I was at the house party, you so loud. Hands waving in the air, all I heard him say is, Where the real kings at? Where the real kings at? I was at the house party, you so loud. Hands waving in the air, all I heard him say is, Where the real kings at? Where the real queens at? Where the real kings, kings, in, 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 in. All we heard was the sovereigns. All I heard was my irregular heartbeat. And every time I hear my irregular heartbeat, I think to myself, when the last time I hugged a grown man like a newborn child? Probably the same time he got new bracelets. You know, handcuffs that fit tight around his wrist, as tight around his wrist as that Robbie performed yesterday. Probably as tight around his wrist as that unprotected sex he had that night to celebrate. But tell me, when do we ever feel safe? Because there's no vault for our emotions, so we be feeling like, no one be feeling like, man, no one be feeling like us. So we always feel alone but never alone. And all we want to do is feel like the hero, you know, save ourselves and a few others. But that's the irony right there. Cause most people are birth a superhuman, you know, alien to this world, fly high. Cause he's above it all to avoid his space. Looking down at the world, listening to all the world problems, thinking all the world problems is he is and his problems is the world. Well, that's the world view of most people. They rather really hide their smiles in a frown. In the same places where they greet haters with middle fingers. In the same places where they have their arms. As open as seven lovers to embrace who you are. In the same places where they give their hearts out like organ donors. Just to show how much they love you. And I know, I know he's thinking about this in the back of a cop car. Thinking about how yesterday he was going to cop a car. Just to show people how driven he is. How he's looking at everyone in the street corners feeling like it's the inner road. Every single street corner looked like the inner road. We became boys and men from the inner road. Why all these street corners look like the inner road? Cop turned back to say, shut up, nigga. This is the end of the road.
And all I can hear is my irregular heartbeat. And every time I hear my irregular heartbeat, I think to myself, when the last time I hugged a grown man like a newborn child, 10 seconds before he got in that cop car, I told him, hey, hey, homie, man. Look, man. Look, man. I, I love you, man. I really mean it. I love you. Thank you. Ladies, want to know what I love as much as chocolate? Fashion. So, of course, I'd end up dressing in some Fashion Is My Chocolate styles. Head over to fashionismychocolate.com for collections with unique details, comfortability, and versatility. Use our promo code to be the sweet tooth of fashion no matter what mood you're in. Make sure you enter J Rose at checkout for 10% off your purchase. Keep growing. Hey guys, welcome back to the J Rose Experience. I'm your host, J Rose. Thanks for sticking around. I'm super, super hyped to introduce you to my next guest because every once in a while, you know, I gotta sprinkle a little creative flavor into the show. Um, I believe that everything is poetry. So um, I decided to reach out to uh, someone that I connected with a little over a year ago through Instagram, actually trying to get together to do some a different type of project that I was doing. And we stayed in contact ever since. And I've watched her grow. I've watched her like blossom into like this amazing superstar that I, I, I just can't get enough of her. So please welcome Philly-based visual artist, art by Sir. Yay! Welcome, girl. Thank you. We finally me. get to meet in person. <laughs> like, I'm super hyped. I'm like starstruck right now. Um, I want to first ask you about your art name. Is that what they call it? Your paint name? Like, how do they? Yeah, it's my art name. Your art name? Okay. Yeah. Art by Sir. Where did that come from? So, Sir is actually. Um, my name that was given to me. Really? Which is Shawnique Izul Rodriguez. Oh my gosh. But, um, how I came up with it being like my actual artist name. Yeah. Um, I remember one time I was driving with my ex and at the time I was sketch like um, designs of bathing suits. Because yeah. that's what I actually wanted to do back. Really? Then. You wanted yeah. to do like fashion design or bathing yeah. suits? No. Just bathing suits. <laughs> That's hella <laughs> specific. Yeah. Just bathing suits. That was it. So when I was thinking of my line, I was like, you know what? It would be pretty dope if I came up with just, you know, um, sir. Like, it's not just made for him. It's made for her. Okay. Because it's just different. Yeah. You wouldn't think of sir as being a woman. Yeah, so for sure. I obviously never pursued it, so that's when I decided. I was just like, hmm, that'd be a good name um, as an artist because um, it's known for women who are in art yeah. that um, have guy names to be very successful. So really? I was like, I'm going to run with it. Oh, so you did your homework when you were like, I'm going to do this art shit for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So um, congratulations because we just were just talking and you said that you are doing your art full time, like you're pursuing this this as a career, um, what led you to make that choice? Um, I got tired of working my part. Like, so I was working full time. Yeah. And then I decided to go into a part time job. Yeah. But my part time job was like a full time job. Yeah. And I was just like, there's no way that I can handle this job and then do art by sir the way that I would like to. Yeah. So one just has to go. And I'm not going to give up my goals and my dreams. Yes. But somebody else's goals and dreams. <laughs> Talk about it, sis. Yes. <laughs> um, so your art is like, I, I always like have this like special place in my heart for visual artists because like what you do is like, I'm like, how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of your art, you embody the Puerto Rican culture, which, mm -hmm. you know, I'm all for it. Right. Yeah. Um, so what makes you focus so much on Puerto Rico culture and what is it about Puerto Rico that inspires your art? Um, at first, I wasn't doing, like, Boricua artwork at all. Um, I was just 
getting back into the groove of yeah. doing art. And it wasn't until like Hurricane Maria hit. Really? That's when I started focusing on, you know, let me do a piece inspired by that. Yeah. And then once I got into it, I was just like, you know what? I really don't know much about my culture yeah. and who I am. So let this be like a learning experience as really? I'm painting. So, oh, wow. Um, every time I dig into learning about, you know, who we are as Puerto Ricans, as Borinquez, yeah, it's like I do my research first yeah, and figure out, you know, what is this or what is that and what does this mean? Mm-hmm. And then that's when I'll create a piece. Because really? I just don't want to create something and I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah, I'm just don't doing know, it like, just to do it. The history behind it yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I, I, when I go through your page, I see that, you know, you're, because you also started doing, um, art on jewelry. Yes. So what made you start putting your artwork on these earrings and, uh, bracelets too and all that? So that actually, uh, was, um, uh, art by Sir's first hustle when I first started. Oh, the original hustle. <laughs> yeah. I like so that. the original hustle happened in 2016 when basically I was saved by the Lord. So, um, I had no money. I was living in Florida at the time and I had no choice but to fold and move back out here. So I asked my mom for a couple of dollars and then the idea came to me when I went to the art store. I was just like, you know what? Why not make, um, these pieces into wood, into earring? Yeah. So that's how I started hustling, doing my earrings at first. And then little by little, as I've been involved in as art by star, I was like, you know, and let me tap into not just earrings. Let me tap into um, bangles and yeah. necklaces and rings now. And it's just insane how um, in the process of doing that, I remember when I was in high school, because I went to um, a performer arts high school. Really? Yeah, one of the ladies that worked there spoke life over to me. And she told me when I was young, <laughs> I see you when you get older. Um create jewelry and I was like lady you crazy as hell <laughs> it's always be like, like yeah I was like I'm not doing that like um that's not my thing like I just like to paint roses and that's it yeah that's, that's it. <laughs> and as I've been doing it like she has popped up in my mind like oh, wow she called it yeah she called it oh my mm-hmm. gosh um and you know you've been blessed with like your jewelry has been in some like major celebrities um like ears <laughs> like so um who are some of the people that have bought your jewelry and um how how did that happen how did you get your jewelry in the hands of celebrities um well instagram is my best friend yes talk and about it social media i mean you really gotta reach out to them like that's what i did like i was i wouldn't take no for an answer like i'll just keep on I mean, I have some celebrities who have blocked me um, because they're like, yo, this girl won't stop. And I'm like, no, I won't. Buy a fucking earring. And it wouldn't even, no, and I wouldn't even be a buy like here. Like, I don't even want you yeah. to buy like on the strength. Just take, take it. it. And um, finally, you know, it clicked and it started happening. Wow. Some, some um, influencers have bought my stuff though. Yeah. Like they haven't been like, oh, give it to me free. Yeah. They have bought my stuff like randomly when I see the name pop up in yeah. my shop. I'm like, no, they didn't. And I had to like go on my Instagram like, is it really them? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What was one of the most exciting um, people that have gotten, that have worn your jewelry? Most exciting? Yeah. Oh, Evie Queen, she tops it. <laughs> What was that like when you, when that like deal or when that like finally happened? So that happened way before it was brought out into like the social media world. Oh, wow. So that been brewing since last, um, last summer. Wow. So I gave her those earrings last summer. I had no idea when she was going to put them on. I didn't know. Here you go. And that was that. And then, um... The beginning of this year, I think it was like around January, February, I was on the phone with one of my friends and we were talking and he's like, holy crap, Shawnee, have you been on Instagram? And I'm like, no, why? He's like, go on there. Is those your earrings that Evie Queen have on? And I'm like, yeah, right. And I, oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> like freaked out. And from there, it's just been like insane. Like it's been everywhere. Like 
on the um, Latin uh, billboards. It's oh now on gosh. a Bad Bunny cover. So it's just, it's been insane. Oh my gosh, girl. Mm -hmm. Look at you. So what, um, well, what advice would you give um, up and coming visual artists that are trying to do the same thing? The best advice that I could give them, honestly, like, don't stop. And mm -hmm. I had this conversation actually with some creators um, that I'm friends with on Instagram. Yeah. So I had shared a little bit of myself every once in a blue I'll do. Yeah. So on Friday night, I literally was having anxiety. Oh my gosh. And I was like, you know what? Something placed in my heart to share it with yeah. like my followers. So I was like, I'm having anxiety. I said, but you know, if it wasn't um, for God having faith in me yeah. with my talent and me having faith in him, yeah, I would stop, but I won't because yeah. I know this is like my purpose. So my word. <laughs> people started hitting me up and was like, don't stop. Like, you just saying that give me life. And I said, no, honestly, I do want to stop. I said, <laughs> but you know what? Like, I have to keep it pushing because if I don't, then I'm just letting my my dreams just sit there. I don't yeah. want to. Like, my ultimate goal, and this is for me, and hopefully it touch others, is that what keeps me going, and hopefully it keeps others going, yeah. is that I don't want to say that the day that I die and I go into heaven's gate and God asks me, well, what did you do with what I gave you? Mm. I want to be able to tell him Ooh. everything that you instilled in me, I poured out as much as I could and even I outpour that's overwhelming. Yeah. Oh, talk about a life gem. <laughs> um, I have, a, I guess, a weird question. I usually ask my guests what are their favorite shoes to perform in. But, like, what are your favorite shoes to paint in? None at all. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have no shoes. Um, I may have socks if I'm cold. <laughs> but, no. Like, there's no, like, like literally, I look like a bum. <laughs> I'm not having nice clothes on because I don't want to get paint on yeah, me at yeah. all. <laughs> but imagine. if I'm out and about on a regular, if I'm not, if I'm not doing an art show, I'm always wearing heels. Yeah. But for the most part, you will always see me rocking some Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love Those them. are fly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um, oh, I almost said your whole <laughs> thing. Um, all right. Thank you so much for um, hanging out with me and sharing um, some amazing gems about visual art. It's really dope. Your story is amazing. And um, I really hope that you continue getting more opportunities to share your story because a lot of people need to hear it. All right. And we'll be right back with a quick discussion. From the brand that redefines the chivalrous style of today's gents comes their exclusive Key to the City collection. I'm super hyped about this collection because no matter where we go with the J. Rose experience, no matter what city we're in, I'm going to be able to rep for New York and people are going to know where I'm from. Hit up Gent and Scholar to rep for your city, including keys to Atlanta, Chicago, D.C., Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, New Orleans, Philly, St. Louis, and of course, New York. So head over to jenandscholarcode.com and use the discount code JROSE10 for 10% off your purchase of $50 or more. Keep growing. Welcome back. Welcome back to the J Rose Experience. I'm your host, J Rose. I'm here with both my guests and we are going to jump into some fun group discussions and we're going to play some games and have a good time. Um, what we're going to talk about today is, of course, you know, we've learned a lot of lessons as adults, especially pursuing our creative passions. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to talk about some of the things that you wish someone taught you when you were younger. Those lessons that you, if you had known maybe 10, 15 years ago, you know, maybe you would have, um, did things a little more different. Take it away, guys. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's so many, but I'm also, when I, I think about that question, was I ready to accept them mm. as well? Because there, there's a lot about like my life that I think if I acted on early on or if I was exposed to that I would have been better off. But just thinking about the type of person I was then, yeah. was I ready to receive those things? Yeah. So like, for example, like, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm into comic books. I'm into just like animation and stuff like that. And like going through high school, there was a community of it, 
But now, since it's like like since I'm so active on like social media, mm-hmm. I see that's like such a big community of yeah. it. Yeah. So before it felt like, yo, I'm I'm a I'm a unicorn at the zoo, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I find out there's a whole nother zoo full of strange animals <laughs> like me, right? <laughs> and that's, that's, social social media. Media. that's social media. <laughs> so like that's that's how I feel. I was like, dang, there's other people that are reading comic book that are black that are talking about it through the black lens that I just didn't know about. And that, you know, and, you know, I would be able to receive that right then and there because I wanted that. I wanted more of, like, a, a, a social group. And, like, you know, especially growing up in Philly where you needed, like, mm-hmm. sense of, like, a family outside of the family just to navigate the world. Mm-hmm. But the, the one thing that I wish I knew then that I don't think I would be able to accept that my career wouldn't be linear. Mm-hmm. I always had these goals of, like, yo... It's going to look like this for me at this wow. point, And it didn't happen at this point <laughs> at that time. <laughs> and I don't think I was ready to receive that yeah. because everything, everybody I admired so much of their career looked like that. Yeah. You well, know? that's what you're looking from the outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I was set that or I also was just ages at the time where I was like, if I don't do it, then I might as well quit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that pressure to meet those age goals. Yeah, and especially, but especially when you hear about so many artists where they like their career starts, so, like, or their career gets so much more popular. I mean, popular a lot later in their life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we can look like at individuals like Rick Ross when his career didn't start jumping until like he was in his thirties. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, so it's like a lot later in life. But at that time, I wouldn't believe stories like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. How about you? What's something you wish you learned? Uh, for it, for uh, visual artists, it's very unique. Yeah. Um, especially because the school that I went to. So I'm not born and raised in Philly. I'm born and raised in Camden, New Jersey. Let's oh, really? Straight. There's so a I, difference. So it's, <laughs> a diff- it's a whole different um, character over there. Mm-hmm. So um, I went to a creative and performing arts high school. Yeah. And my uh, visual art teacher will always tell us, Oh, you're gonna be a starving artist. It wasn't like it wasn't positive, yeah. like the experience with her at time. It was like you were gonna be a starving artist, you're not gonna make money. Like, look at other artists like Van Gogh. He only sold at the time that they knew of back then when I was in high school, he only sold one painting. But now, as researchers have been digging in more in his life, he only sold two in his whole entire lifetime. And then when he passed away. That's when the bread started coming in. Now yeah. his paintings are worth millions of dollars. So she would instill that in us. So it was just like, why am I going to pursue my goal in art? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to make money out of this. Like, this is just for fun. So yeah. at the time when I started doing art, not on the side, but the only time that I would do art was when I was in a relationship with somebody. Yeah. That was my form of expressing like how I felt because that's what I love to do yeah but to make money off of it nope not at all it wasn't until you know I found the love of you know Jesus Christ that it was just like oh you can make money off of this like I gave it to you utilize it yeah so I wish somebody would have back then told me about um how I could make money out of it how I could have you know what my purpose was in in God's kingdom to do. Yeah. If it would have been like that, it would have been a whole lot smoother, but that wasn't my time. Yeah. And so I take it for what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for now, for girls that look up to me, um, some of my girlfriends, uh, daughters, I let them know, like, if this is what you really want to do, mm-hmm. do it. And even mm-hmm. at an early age, I already tell them, start hustling, like, keep your stuff. But every once in a blue, like, sell your stuff for, like, $10, 20 Like, yeah. somebody will buy it because you want to at least let them get a feel of how it is to sell a little something. But, but for the most part, keep it because it's worth money. Yeah. It's worth value if you make it. Yeah. What's, like, a like a golden rule you would give to um, a young poet um, that wants to come up in the, um. the poetry world? <laughs> Uh, fuck gatekeepers. There's no gatekeepers except your expectations of yourself and your imagination. Um, uh, treat it. Treat. Uh, there's no. Um, it's not a healthy diet to function from a starter's art, starving artist perspective. Mm-hmm. And like, um, make your plan B, C, D, E, F, and G. Make your plan A work. 
Mm. Facts. <laughs> um, what was something that when that you were taught when you were young that you were able to bring to your adulthood and and thrive with? Um, <laughs> um, I had a, I had two art teachers. Mm-hmm. So, um, my art teacher that I did not like was <laughs> um, his name was Mr. Gruff. But See, one, they always come on here yeah. talking about the teacher that they didn't like. <laughs> but you know what? I ended up growing to love him as oh. I became an adult because he was very rough on us. Mm. That's why I didn't like it. Mm. Because he would walk around and if he didn't like something, he would tap a ruler in our hands like, no, that's not how you do it. Oh my gosh. And I would get so frustrated. And one thing that he instilled in me was that not only that, but I got into classical music because of him. Because, mm. I, you know, we little kids from the hood like yeah. we don't know nothing about this like we yeah. listen to hip hop all day or yeah. R&B and I've noticed I catch myself as an adult now that at times like if I need like the noise to like stop mm. I'll put that on yeah. and I notice even when I cause I do teach um Latino art history when I do it with the kids too they actually enjoy it because nice. it's something different than what they're used to. Mm. It's more calm. It's more in, t- in tune with like our spirits and our souls. Mm. So you can, you know, go with the flow with whatever you're creating. Nice. So that's one thing that, you know, nice. helped me out. <laughs> How about you? Did anyone drop any gems when you were young that you were able to to use now as an adult? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I think... Um... Uh, I think the one that I go to is um, by my friend KP, who's a poet as well. The uh, the work goes to the workers. Mm. Yeah, and mm. I, I have always kind of like led to that philosophy. Um, part of it because I'm like I'm more of a socialist in my like adulthood than I was uh, younger. Yeah. But also it's just like I, I like the idea of just like the idea of just like yo, you're gonna get more work if you just keep working. Mm-hmm. And that that visibility is has what has always driven my career. Like when we was talking about earlier, just like the opportunities that this came about, or the opportunities that I went after, it was just because I consistently worked. Yeah. Um, and but also, I know people talk about working and grinding and stuff like that. But part of working is also being unproductive for your mental health. Okay. There's like there's actual weeks where I don't do nothing. There's yeah. sometimes months I don't do nothing. And I just plan it out. Um, mm. It's hard to do it, but it's just like, all right, if I do these two gigs, I can sit off a month. Yeah. Because that's just important, too. Because like a lot of times, if I don't refresh, especially given that you know the topics I talk about... They're that's, heavy. Yeah, that shit weighs on my soul. And mm. I, I'm, that shit is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. So that's like a part of my work is just like taking care of myself and like, you know, and that, that leads to like other opportunities as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm all for the taking a break sometimes. Like, we do that too. Like, after we film and stuff like that, I take a few days, maybe a week, and I'm like, don't call me. Like, don't, I don't want to talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I feel you. You guys ready to play a game? Yes. yes. <laughs> all right. It's time for our off the top segment where we play a randomly chosen game and. Sometimes we create, sometimes we just play something fun, um, but at the end of the day, it's a good time. So let me get my cards. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Will you do us the honors? All right, what does it say? Two truths, one lie. Yay! I like that game. All right, so we're gonna sit down. We're gonna write two. We're gonna write three sentences about ourselves. Two of them have to be true. One of them has to be a lie, and then we gotta figure out which one is a lie for each other. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna grab some paper and pen, and we'll be right back. Whether it's tax season, the holidays, or whatever falls in between, you want to make sure that you're being smart with your money. So go visit my girl, Queen Candace at the Queen Blueprint to learn how to gain your financial freedom. You could get a personalized debt payoff plan, a full financial overview, and learn to repair your relationship with money. Smarter Money Moves are waiting for you at www.thequeenblueprint.com or call 877-387-BLUE. Use code JROSE20 for 20% off of all our financial services. 
I'm so excited I got both my kids' appointments to get their hair done at Shining Star Kid Salon in Brooklyn, New York. The best part is, I get to pick up a couple of my favorite natural hair products like their Fearless Edge Control, ooh, or their Fearless Hair Oil. And these are just some of my favorite products to style my hair with. Head over to ShiningStarKidSalon.com to order from their line of natural products the whole family can enjoy. Or make an appointment if you're in town. Use code JROSE20 at checkout for 20% off your online purchase. Keep growing. All right, and we're back. Welcome back. Are you guys ready to write down your truths and lies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Weird. I'm mad dramatic, right? <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> All right, so since you guys are the guests, I'm gonna have you guys go first. Ladies first. Okay. Um, I am 36 years old. I am a mother and I went to Catholic school. Ooh. Uh, I want to say the lies you went to Catholic school. Did you say you went to a school for art? That's what you're going to say. Ah, uh, <laughs> he's the same. Okay. I, I don't think I don't think you have kids. I don't think you do. I think this is the second one. It's a lie. It is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Me having kids? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> She's not too busy paying for that. <laughs> Uh, but see, the Catholic school, I was like, mm, but she went to performing arts when he said that. But then I was like, well, maybe before that, she went to Catholic school. Yeah, I did. Yeah? I went to Catholic school. Well, she a mad talk. holy roly. Of course she went to Catholic <laughs> But I'm not Catholic, though. No. I grew up Catholic. Ah, Catholic. you see? But I went to the Catholic plot school. thickens. <laughs> I went to Catholic school from, oh, kindergarten to fourth grade and then I went to public school. Oh, okay. okay. So you got like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Nice. A whole lot of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was seasoned very well. I see. <laughs> How about you, Lindo? What you got? Um, I went to school for graphic design. Um, I got a great fear of chalk. Uh, I was on a TV show called Ghost Rider growing <laughs> up as the main character, Jamal. Say the first one again. Uh, I went to school for graphic design. I um, believe that. Um, um, I have a great fear of chalk. And, um, that's just weird, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like, huh? And, um, uh, I was on a TV show as a main character, Jamal, on a show called Ghost Rider. I, o I almost believed that. <laughs> um... I almost believe that, but I know that that's the lie. <laughs> I know the Ghost Rider is a lie. <laughs> I think, I don't know. That just is, yeah, that's a lie, but I hope the chalk is a lie too. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hopefully he wrote two lies in one yeah, truth. if you a poet, like. <laughs> no, I, well, one, poets are not walking around with chalk. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I got poop for y'all. I'm bring on my chalk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you was in school, you know, you will write on a board. Like, okay, you so. dating me. Most of the boards are like dry race boards. Oh, that's, that's true. So. Oh, well. You uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little older. Say, <laughs> so we, we definitely had chalk. <laughs> yeah, we had chalk. Nah, uh, the Ghost Rider is a lie. I know it. I know it. Uh, um, Yeah, the Ghost Rider thing is a lie. Um, But yeah, I have a fair chalk. I remember... um. Being in third grade, and my teacher told me that um, chalk used to be made by like dead bones and stuff like oh that. Oh my god! And I just can't get that image out of my head. <laughs> so anything that reminds me of chalk, uh, or when I'm around chalk, it just makes me screamish. I cringe. Oh. So a lot of times, like I, I often don't have to take medication, but like <laughs> <laughs> the medication like really bothers me a lot. I try to do everything to avoid medicine because it feels so much like chalk. Chalk. To me. <laughs> Yes. It's a that's lot. That's wild. That's a lot of things. Well, not a lot of things. But if there's a, things that like remind me of chalk or actual chalk, I try to avoid. Really? Yeah, I'm going to avoid. Uh, I just don't oh, like that's so touching different. chalk. Like, I don't like the way it feels on my hands mm. after no. a while. 
That was hilarious. Yeah, and the, the ghostwriter thing is just alive and telling for years. Yo, <laughs> you had me though. You posted something yeah, a few yeah. weeks ago, and I was like, "Oh my god, I used to love that show." And it's it's like a Mandela effect. If you are y'all familiar with the Mandela effect, mm. where like a group of people have this like like belief that this actually happened, yes, <laughs> but it didn't actually happen. <laughs> So it's like it's like 10, 20 people I actually know in my life that think like I remember you on this show. <laughs> I was like, I was never on the show. We can pull up this show, right? That's hilarious. I just dressed up as Jamal for one Halloween, took some really good shows. I was like, I was like oh my god, that was you. <laughs> and I was like, I thought all black people only looked alike to cops. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, I could never, I was never Jamal. <laughs> you had me and I was like, and I was just like, I used to love that show. He's a celebrity to me. I, I know, was, I saw you respond. And then I read the rest of the post and I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's, he lied. And it's like, do y'all watch that show very well? Because <laughs> I, I mean, no, I never look like I don't look like him at all. It was like over twenty years ago, and you're definitely dating me when you talk about that show. Okay. All right, you gotta guess my truth yeah. or my lies. All right, yeah. I started writing twenty two years ago. I used to do gymnastics, and I'm allergic to cats, but I love them. Uh, I think the I think the one that's alive is you're allergic to cats. <laughs> I don't know. Don't look at my face. <laughs> okay, we supposed to look at the cameras Gymnastics. now. Gymnastics. I think that's a lie. Yeah. I've never did gymnastics. <laughs> oh, really? I do not have the I can't even do a, a, a somersault. Like, that doesn't mean you 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 always I don't have like that coordination with my body. <laughs> even like, when you was five? <laughs> nah. I feel like everybody did backflips in that no. bed. <laughs> okay. My mother was mad O D, like old school Puerto Rican. She'd be like, You're gonna break your neck. And I couldn't no, I couldn't do that. Okay. But I started writing when I uh when I was sixteen, which was twenty two years ago. Don't do the math. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never done gymnastics and I am mm-hmm. allergic to cats, but I really do love them. <laughs> okay. like, why? Um, I have a cat and I am my house dying all the time. Like, oh, I, I imagine some people take the shot nowadays, like I'm once not, a year shot. You know how you don't like the medicine because uh, the chalk? I just don't like shots. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Weird. Yeah. And I'm not afraid of needles. I have tattoos. I just don't like shots. I have one last question for you guys. It's something that I ask every single guest that comes on the show. I have this uh, idea, this concept that creative people are like super mutants. Like we're like the Mm X-Men. We have superpowers. We do things that other people cannot do. Um, So I want to know what is your superpower? Like me being a visual artist? Yeah, girl. Yeah, I guess that's my superpower. (laughs) I mean, I don't look at it as a superpower. I look at it, you know, it's a gift. It's a it's a special gift. And um, everybody don't have that gift in them, unfortunately. And if they do, they just don't pursue it for whatever reason. I know my gift is valuable and I have a limited of time here to use it. And mm-hmm. I'm going to use it to the best of my ability. Yes. So your gift is your superpower. Mm-hmm. Nice. My instinct is to say that my gift is just like I can create images with words but I often feel especially since I've been just talking to my therapist and I've just been unpacking shit I often feel like I have the same power as a Grinch that sounds horrible (laughs) like you want to steal Christmas and then give it back (laughs) (laughs) okay Thank you yeah. for putting me out there. If anybody's <laughs> missing any shit when I leave, you know why. At least uh, we know it's coming back. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> um, but, you know, in the Grinch movie, I thought it was incredible that his heart got bigger. Mm. And I feel as though, like, that's me. It was like my art becomes better because I'm learning so much about people and expanding my worldview on things mm-hmm. as well as my politics and understanding of how to approach things. So I like to believe my heart gets bigger with this work and that's the true superpower. Mm. Mm. Go ahead, poet. See? Go ahead. I love me some poets. Y'all just be extra, but like in a good way. 
Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It was such an honor to meet you and finally, like after knowing you for um, over a year, like finally meeting you in person. Before we say goodbye to the audience, please let the audience know where they can find you, where they can find your art, where they can find your merch, all that good stuff. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I think that's about it. You can find me at Art by Sir and as A R T B Y S I R. And you can um, get any of my merchandise on my Etsy shop, but within the next month or two, it's going to be dismantled. And I'm going to finally get a website. Yes! <laughs> okay, check out, stick around for that website. Yes. <laughs> um. You can find me on Instagram at Lindo Yes. That's L I N D O Yes. Like I agree and stuff. Who I am. Um, I have a website, um, but I I also have a shop. My website and my shop are the same shit. <laughs> I don't know why I say them separately. Like they two different things. But Lindo Yes dot com and um, just hit shop. I got hoodies, face masks, buttons. Um, I got a lot of merch. I just be selling shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll put a, my logo on it. I'll sell it. There you go. There you go. So make sure, guys, that you follow these amazing creatives. They out here doing the damn thing, serving the creative community, serving our people. And make sure that you guys follow us. We're on the Facebook. <laughs> We're on YouTube at the Rose Garden Events. You can follow us on Instagram at J Rose Experience. And you can follow me as your host, J Rose, at My Crumbled Thoughts. Thanks so much, guys. Keep growing. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.